In this short demo, we won't be using any new tools or techniques. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is leverage the tools and techniques that we learned in the previous videos to create a spoon and a knife, uh, which we'll uh, add to our table setting project after we've built them. So for my spoon and knife, I'm going to start with another box. I like to do a lot of box modeling, as you can see. I'm going to create myself a long 2x4 type shape. Uh, the same basic shape that I started with when I created my fork. The fork and the spoon are somewhat similar when you consider that you have to eat with them. They each have uh, like a pan-shaped head to scoop food with and handles that you hold. So I'm just going to start this box out with no divisions whatsoever and I'll add some with multi-cut. In the previous demo we talked about how holding control lets us insert additional loops. So I'm going to insert a loop here and then I'm going to actually add some geometry because my spoon, uh, the head of my spoon needs to sort of bow in and I don't have enough geometry to do that here. What I can do instead is shift select both faces on the top and bottom of the spoon and if I hit control E to extrude but then immediately just hit R on my keyboard I can shift to scaling and I can just go ahead and scale these in on all axes toward each other. You can see that I've created a sort of a little window here in the center of my spoon which I can then push down. So I can either choose to simply push it down with my move tool or I could go ahead and extrude again and add geometry. For this one I'm just going to go ahead and push the spoon's head down like so. Uh, let's give our spoon's handle one more cut along uh, this point at the neck. And then we can just go to face mode and we'll scale all of these faces to be more narrow. And we now have something that's already sort of looking spoon-like outside of the fact that it is obviously square. So to change that, of course, we're going to hit 3 on our keyboard to view it in smooth preview. And that's our current spoon. That's pretty good, but as with the previous demo, uh, the spoon is going to need some curvature to it since spoons are ergonomic. So we'll select vertex, select the verts here at the neck of the spoon, and I'm going to lift these up a little bit, give it some nice curvature there on the body. And I can also choose to move these forward or back depending on how harsh or gentle a transition I want. So I'm going to go ahead and leave mine about where they were. I'm pretty happy with that. And I'll go back into object mode and take a look. And this is my current result. Again, the head, the sort of pin shaped scoop area on the spoon, I'm going to select the front verts along here. Make sure that I got them all. You can check it by rotating with alt left click. Orbit around my object. And I got them, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of lift those up as well. There we go. If I wanted to, I could also grab just the verts. And the reason I clicked dragged there was because I wanted these two verts, okay, and the two on the bottom. And when you when you drag a marquee, it's going to select everything within that marquee, whether or not you can see it. So I selected the top and bottom verts there, and I could kind of push these down a little bit more if I wanted to and make that base quite a bit thicker. That's pretty good. Select these, maybe move them up a tad. I'm just being kind of picky now. So go to object mode and that is our result. Uh, with multi-cut we can also do what are called control loops where if we add more loops toward the bottom of the geometry It'll help flatten out this strangely rounded point that we have going here. So if I click here, yeah, you can see much better without the control loop and then hit it redo with the control loop. Okay. And if I hit one on my keyboard, you can see where that loop was added. Another ring of verts right here helped a lot. My unsmooth model 
looks like this. That's all right. Smooth preview looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. So we'll go ahead and move this out of the way for now. And then we'll make a knife. The knife is probably the easiest of the three shapes to create because it really doesn't require a whole lot of additional extrusion. Really, it's just a matter of making another long rectangular box, multi-cutting it in the areas that we know we need to multi-cut for additional geometry, and then moving and scaling verts. So let's use our multi-cut tool to cut out our handle. I want the handle on my knife to be about there. And I'm going to add another loop pretty close to the first one. That way I can now select these faces okay, and scale these in as I typically have done. Now, instead of a paddle type of a shape, what I'm going to do is move these back over with W. Again, W, E, and R are move, rotate, and scale, W, E, R. With W, I can move the selected faces over. That way they kind of line up. And you can see this is already looking more knife-like than when here it was centered. So I push these back. And then I know that I'm going to need to sort of taper these edges to a point. I could select this face or both edges, either way. And I'm just going to scale them down toward each other. And now we have a nice blade along the edge of our knife. I'd like to round out the top half or give it sort of a point. So with multi-cut, I'm going to need at least one more row. I'll go ahead and add it there by holding control. And if I go into vertex mode now, I can select the verts on top and just kind of pull them forward. Right? If I view this in smooth preview, uh, I get something that looks sort of like a butter knife. I can add geometry to this. I can pull and push on verts. Um, or I could even leave it in the unsmooth version. It doesn't really fit very well with our original spoon, uh, but that's okay. We could either choose to make our spoon somewhat more geometric, or we could smooth preview this and then add cuts and control loops to give it a harder edge. I'm going to let you guys experiment with the modeling tools and techniques that we talked about uh, to go ahead and make your scenes look different from mine. That's the art part, and that part you're going to be in charge of.